this is fascinating that India has the world's largest renewable energy park. And it's five times larger than the city of Paris. So this is in Gujarat. And a narrow airship doesn't even have an air traffic controller to guide incoming planes. And the only infrastructure is a portable toilet and a makeshift office in a container in the midst of miles of barren land bordering Pakistan is an unlikely gateway to the world's largest renewable energy park. The airstrip was even smaller in 2022 when Adani Group head Gautam Adani, who was in the second richest person in the world, first used a small aircraft to reach the barren area that didn't even have a pin code and got its name from a village 80 kilometers away. Although, yeah, that, that seems inconvenient. Yeah, I, I had to look where... Uh, it, it, now, it's close to Pakistan, but it's actually on the Indian side of the border. I can see why you would why you would put solar and wind and stuff there. Apparently, it gets a lot of good uh, good wind and it gets a lot of solar, so it makes an ideal location. But the interesting thing is is that uh, they have a problem there because it is a, basically like a dry lake bed. They have they have problems with dust, and you know when you get dust on solar panels, they begin to lose their. Uh, their ability to take and uh, generate power. So they have set up, which I find really interesting, they have set up a waterless robotic cleaning system that takes and goes along the top of those panels and somehow brushes or blows away or whatever they do, the dust off of them. Because you can imagine trying trying to keep up an area, uh, an area I forget how many square miles it is, but it's huge, or acres, or whatever. Well, they, they said it's five times the size of the city of Paris. So the land hardly had any vegetation due to highly saline soil, let alone any habitation. It has the second best solar radiation in India, and wind speeds five times that of the plains served as an ideal location for a renewable energy park. 18-kilometer drive from the airstrip, it's 538 square kilometers. Holy cow. They can't even find a mosquito in the area. It's so barren. That was original intent of that area was to, uh, was to, was to manufacture salt. And, of course, it's also an ideal location for uh, particularly solar with all the sunshine. And now all they got to do is start putting some of those uh, CATLs uh battery storage units there and uh that'll be great so somebody is looking to commission two gigawatts of capacity and plan to add four more gigawatts of capacity by the end of 25 and then five gigawatts every year thereafter they're going to be able to power a few things with that (laughs) it's funny air traffic controller some 660 kilometers away is the last guidepost for airplanes going there its reach is only till Tent City and pilots are virtually on their own for the last 80 kilometers or so, including landing. I'm not sure the significance. I mean, can you not, I guess, you, I don't know if you can't drive there or maybe driving is just not compatible. Anyways, I thought that was kind of fascinating. That's that's a big, big solar park. And, it, and I guarantee they'll be incorporating some battery packs. Maybe not at the site, but somewhere in the transmission, there's going to start to be those battery packs to soak up that energy so they're transmitting power 24 hours a day but this is going to have wind and solar but the thing is wind typically now in the united states wind is strongest at night so i don't know if it's the same all over the world this is this one of the big mismatches in california is that their wind is strongest between like 1 and 3 a.m and hardly anybody's using power during a time that wind is really strong hi i'm david with ev world news If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.